Welcome everyone. We're going to start our webinar on circular plastics in France. My name is Leontine Schijf. I'm the senior advisor of circular economy at the Dutch Embassy in France, and I will be your moderator here for today. As you saw, we have some technical information. First, we are in a Zoom webinar, meaning that we cannot see or hear you, but you can see and hear us. Still, interaction is very important because we want to adapt the webinar to your needs. So please ask any of your questions in the Q&A box here at the bottom. We started with a poll, you might have seen it or see it now on your screen with two questions. So please click on the answer that fits you most. And then I will look to our webmaster to show the results shortly. And when we have the results, yes, we see the majority of the organizations we have here today are startups, SMEs, nonprofits, a couple of large companies, welcome everyone. And the majority of you already has been in contact with RVO, Embassy, MBSO, so that's good. Interesting to know. Welcome. So let me kick off this webinar with a brief introduction of why we are here. We have a slide to show. Yes, there we start. On why we need circular plastics. Well, because we need a circular solution for the plastic pollution problem we face. Without a fundamental change, by 2050, there could be more plastics than fish in the ocean. That's something we want to avoid. So to turn the tide, we need to radically increase our effort to speed up the transition to a circular economy. And therefore, we need three things. The first one, to eliminate the plastics we don't need. Second, to innovate, to create better materials and business models. And third, circulate to keep plastics in the economy and out of the environment. Next slide, we see then why France? Well, because we, the Netherlands, have a shared vision on circular plastics with France. Last year, our government set up the European Plastics Pact together. And now the French government is setting more strict goals for the plastic sector to become circular. And for companies, that means there will be new investments and regulations accelerating this transition. However, France doesn't yet have all the expertise in its territory to achieve this. And that is where Dutch companies could provide added value. The need for innovation, for extra capacity, they pose those opportunities for Dutch businesses to expand into France. Moreover, France is an important country because it has a big networking function in the plastic sector. For example, meeting hopefully, I think in real life this year, during the Polytech in Lyon from the 12th to 15th of October. So to wrap up, French stakeholders are investing in circular plastics, which is leading to new opportunities and these opportunities and market trends have been captured in the report written by Technopolis, which will be presented shortly. And since you're all here watching this today, I just want to let you know that all of you will receive an exclusive full copy of the Technopolis report after the webinar. But first I will explain today's program. In the beginning, you saw an interesting list of speakers on the slide. So what will they be presenting today? First, we have Joris Houtman. He is the chief representative of the MBSO in Lyon, and he will explain what the Dutch economic network is and does. Secondly, we go into the meat of the webinar when Fernando Diaz Lopez and Morgan Veille Lavalle from Technopolis will present the great study that they did and thirdly, we have Korka Scheringa, who will explain how you can get extra support from the Dutch government to take your business into France. 
as I said, don't forget there is a Q&A box below for you to pose your questions in, and we will discuss these throughout the webinar. So thank you so much for being here today. I will now give the floor to Joris. Don't forget to unmute yourself. Thank you, Leontine. Good morning, everyone. I hope you hear me loud and clear. I'm pleased to present you the Dutch Economic Network in France. Some of you know us already and work with us. We are one team of colleagues to support you to do business in France. In the Netherlands, we are based in Den Haag at RVO, Netherlands Enterprise Agency. Our embassy in Paris with our colleagues from innovation, agriculture and agro, economic policy and business teams. We have two NBSO's offices, Netherlands Business Support Office in France, one in Nantes and one in Lyon, where I'm based with Astrid. And she's at the back office now, you don't see her. And we have 11 honorary consuls all over France. What do we do and how can we help you? Our Dutch economic network in France is there to facilitate you with contacts, local institutions, organization, is where we are for to network, local network. Trade missions like Polytech later on this year, but also today online with a webinar. Matchmaking and finding business partner is one of our focus and it's where we make the difference for you. And last but not least, Providing market information and finding business opportunities, it was what we do with the sector study. That's why now I give the floor to Technopolis with Fernando to give us the results of this sector's study today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Joris, and uh, thank you to all the team um behind this uh, this webinar and thank you to all of the participants for finding time to to listen to what we have to say we're extremely excited and, and happy to to present uh, the results of a study that was commissioned uh earlier this year in spite of the pandemic uh by the netherlands enterprise agency rvo the embassy of the kingdom of the netherlands in france and the netherlands business support office in lyon uh to to provide an overview of the latest developments in France uh, in the circular plastics sector with uh, special attention at two steps of the circular plastics value chain. In, in particular, the, 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 as we see in the, in the, in the next slide, um, this study focuses uh, on eco-design and it also focuses on end of life and recovery. There are, there are really, really a lot of, of interesting developments um, in, 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 in regards to plastic alternatives, for example, in, in, in regards to eco-design, but also really interesting developments in recycling and reuse uh, waste, uh, uh, waste uh, systems uh, focusing on the end of life. This study has four particular objectives um, that will be described in more detail uh, by my colleague Morgan. Uh, but we, what we present in this study is basically a general, general uh, overview of market trends and challenges. Uh, then we provide you who is who in France uh, in, the, in the circular plastics uh, sector, uh, the different type of stakeholders. And then we also provide a, a rather comprehensive uh, overview of the, of the legislative framework in France that is allowing the creation of business opportunities and, 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 and the identification of, 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 of areas of opportunity, and, and which is a, the last objective of, of, of the study, which is really tapping into the co cooperation and business opportunities for Dutch companies who are interested in the market, who already are in the market, or who are simply curious to see what France has to offer with all of the know-how, technology, uh, solutions, and, 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 um, and ideas that uh, you have to offer. Uh, so in the next uh, in the next slides, my colleague uh, Morgan will 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 guide you through the through the rest of the of the content. Thank you, Fernando. Good morning, everybody. Um, so indeed, I think we wanted to start by giving you a bit of an overview of the 
what we identify as the main three business hubs in France for plastics. Um, it's a sector which is very diverse in France, composed mainly of SMEs, and they're present throughout the country, but we, we wanted to really emphasize that three areas where you will find a lot of plastic companies in France are namely the auvergne rhône region. So in the Southeast, uh, with of course the, the business hub that is Lyon, um, the East, the Grand Est, as well as the Northern region, which is Haute-France. It's interesting to note that each of these regions has uh, a speciality or a, a particular focus. So of course in the South, there's a very strong chemical sector in the East, um, the plastics industry has tended to focus more on, on PVC. Um, and in the Northern part of France, it's very interesting to see an emerging market for biomass and, and alternatives to plastics. Uh, we also wanted to highlight that Paris, the, the capital, is really the, usually the headquarters of most trade organizations are present there. So here you have a few names. Pedirec, for example, is a trade organization for recycling. And then on the side as well of the map, you'll see that there are a few logos. These are clusters, um, clusters that we've identified and described exclusive, exclusively in the report, such as Materialia and Accelera Polymeris. These are all clusters um, in France, which are specialized in the plastic sector. Next slide, please. So a very important thing to understand today in France is the extremely ambitious legislative framework in place for circular plastics. In 2020, um, the French government voted a very important law on the circular economy. And within that law, there were extremely ambitious objectives for firstly, recycling plastics. So as you see, there's an objective nationally to reach 100% of recycled plastic by 2025, as well as the elimination, as Leontine had first started by saying, of plastic that is not considered essential in the economy. This is what we refer to as the progressive ban on single use packaging up until 2040. This of course has major implications on the objects that we will be using as alternatives to single use plastics. The most obvious examples which we're all familiar with are of course disposable cutlery, straws, but progressively we'll see that this will go even further within supermarkets really the deployment of devices in bulk, offering services in, offering products in bulk, rather than just with takeaway packaging. So it's important for you to keep this legislative framework in, in mind as we go over the opportunities for you in France for circular plastics today. Next slide, please. In addition to this legislative framework, it's also important to note that the French government has put in place a very important supportive policy framework to help companies transition towards circular practice. Perhaps the most important funding mechanism available today as a result of the pandemic is the Orplas program. The Orplas program helps companies in the plastic sector do two things essentially. One, it provides funding for recyclers to extend their capacity. And secondly, it helps industry finance that purchase of recycled plastic material instead of resorting to virgin plastic material. This is hugely important as, as you're aware, today the price of the virgin material is still relatively cheaper than recycled plastic. So there's really an ambition to help industry finance that transition. The integration today of recycled plastic in industry over all sectors is relatively low at around 5%. This is not the case for certain sectors like packaging where it's higher, but overall, there's really a need to boost the integration of recycled plastics in industry. A second really important point which the government is, is developing to help the transition towards a circular economy is through public purchasing. All European governments have green public procurement in place, but here the French government really stepped up by introducing in its circular economy law in 2020, new additional measures to help reuse and recycling of material within public purchasing. So for all local authorities, there's now a national um, objective or, or measure to include 20 to 100% of waste as raw material in the products purchased. This again opens up opportunities for companies who are providing recycled plastics and who can help the local authorities um, develop these measures. Last but not least, 
extended producer responsibility schemes. I'm sure you're all aware of them. Um, now they're available in most countries in Europe for packaging, especially. With the circular economy law in France, um, the government decided to extend RPO schemes to other product categories. Some of them contain plastics, for example, toys, for example, cigarette filters, as well as hygienic products and nappies. So the idea with this slide is really to show you that the public sector is extremely committed to helping not only the public sector, but also industry transition towards a circular mindset, whether it be at the beginning stages in eco-design, as well as the end of life. Next slide, please. Briefly, before we go into our recommendations for you in entering the market, we thought it would be interesting to give you this overview of what we consider to be the main strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of the secular French uh, plastic sector today. So an essential strength really is the mature and expert ecosystem that we introduced in the first slide that is already in place. There are clusters and about three or four of them who are already dedicated to plastics and who already have a lot of programs and initiatives designed for circularity. In addition, as you're aware, there is a thriving chemical sector in France providing additional opportunities for the sector. In terms of weaknesses, it is clear that there is still today in the market an insufficient quality and quantity of recycled plastic material. This is where industry really needs to step up both in the development of recycled plastic material and also in its integration in industry. Another weakness is still the relatively cheaper price of the virgin raw material in comparison to recycled plastic materials. In terms of opportunities, we see a great opportunity, particularly in chemical recycling, which we really believe has strong potential to help boost the recycling rate of plastics in France today. There is also untapped potential for growth in some sectors related to circular plastics. Just one industry where recycled plastics could be included a lot more is the automotive sector, which is a particularly dynamic sector of the economy in France. In terms of threats, it is undeniable that there is still some difficulty in capturing certain plastic waste. If recycling rates are not as high in France today as the European average, it is also because there is difficulty in capturing all the plastic waste that is emitted from households and industry. Next slide, please. So here with these um, next two slides, I'm gonna be taking over, I'm gonna be taking you through our recommendations for you in France in the circular plastic sector. So to begin with, looking at the design and manufacturing phase, um, an essential aspect of this is of course, eco-design. So as I said, a challenge today in France is that the integration of recycled plastics in industry is still relatively low. There is a need for locally sourced recycled plastic material from industry. And this needs to, and this, this capacity needs to be increased not only from French actors, but also European neighbors. In addition, from an eco-design perspective, industry is increasingly turning to new, less carbon intensive materials to reduce that carbon footprint. There is evidence from research that here improved plastics are needed to replace such materials, which are heavier or require more energy intensive um, processes such as glass, uh, metal and concrete. Aside from eco-design, plastic alternatives are also gaining more attention in the country. Single use plastic bands have been driving this, particularly for the packaging sector. You need to find alternatives to cutlery, straws. And here the interesting thing is, that there is a growing demand for virgin plastic alternatives and notably bio-based plastics. There is a growing sector in France of bio-based plastics, but it's still in its early stages. And any external European experience in this domain is very much welcome. Now turning to the end of life phase, sorting and recycling is a huge part of what needs to be done today to accelerate the change towards a circular economy. As sorting and recycling is expected to grow, notably for household packaging waste, there will be 
a need for improved technical technological solutions for sorting. So one of those te technological solutions that we identified um, is, for example, infrared technology, as well as tribal electricity. There is a need to capture plastic waste more effectively, to sort it and to find um, an end of life solution. In addition, it has been proven that mechan mechanical recycling has limited abilities for all plastics. And here we see an essential place for the Netherlands in the market for, me for mechanical recycling. It is considered to be a leading country for chemical recycling solutions, particularly by French actors. And although French actors, particularly big players like Total, are increasing capacity and developing platforms to develop mechanical recycling, there is still a lot more that needs to be done, particularly if we are to reach a rate of 100% recycled plastic by 2025. It is also important to note that bioplastic recovery today is still not very detailed in legislation. So the essential problem that France has today is that these bioplastics are being thrown away in the same way as any ordinary packaging, which is made of recycled or plastic material, virgin plastic material. There are no specific channels or abilities to truly recycle and manage the end of life of such bioplastics. It is very clear from interviews that we've conducted and existing research that there are solutions that need to be developed for bioplastics recycling. And we really see opportunities here for research centers between, between France and the Netherlands to set up common collaborative um, opportunities in this domain. It's no secret that plastic pollution and particularly microplastics um, are a huge problem in the environment and, and particularly in water, rivers and, and the sea. The recovery of plastics in the sea and rivers in France is a major challenge and solutions are required for the collection and detection of such micro and nanoplastics in the environment today. In France, there is relatively small scale schemes in place to address this problem. But again, more research, and particularly coming from research centers, um, is needed in this domain. In terms of biomass recovery, so you may have note, you may have, you may remember that in the beginning of the presentation, I I told you that the northern part of France is a major agricultural um, player with an emerging biomass market, um, and here increasingly we find that expertise is required to convert biomass to plastics. So plant to plastics technology is needed. And again, we have identified several uh, big players in the Netherlands which are dedicated to this kind of market and where their expertise could be very much welcome in France. Last but not least, turning to upcycling. In the circular economy, it is quite common for some materials to focus on upcycling, but they're usually not in the plastics material. We really see untapped opportunities in plastic upcycling today, particularly for chemical actors, which could develop solutions tailored to such materials. So before I hand the mic, metaphorical mic, um, back to the MBSO team, um, I just want to give you sort of our three main um, points of advice for how to approach the French market today. So the first thing to do is, of course, to get in touch with the Dutch economic network. Secondly, from our mapping of stakeholders in France and from our research that we've conducted over the last few months, clusters, referred to as pôle de compétitivité in French, are really essential actors to get in touch with to basically network and also get a better idea of what collaborative opportunities are available today, particularly in research and development. The classes that we spoke to are, in, are extremely open to Dutch companies and Dutch research centers. This was a clear message coming from the interviews. We also recommend that you find out more about green public procurement opportunities in France. As I said, since January this year, there is really an increase, there's a big push for the circularity 
particularly of plastics in public procurement. So there will be opportunities for the public sector and public procurement um, to develop such services. Last but not least, it's really important to actually take part in trade fairs on the French territory. So there's a big trade fair upcoming um, in October, Polytech, which I'm sure some of you are already aware of. But this is just one of the fairs that we identified in the report. And where you will find opportunities to network with the plastics industry and related sectors. That's it for me. And um, thank you I, so much, I, Morgan. Yeah. yeah, perfect. That was really interesting and also very dense in information. Therefore, I already see some questions. And um, I would like to start with the question because you spoke a bit about support mechanisms in France. What are they? Are there more and are they available to Dutch companies? That's a good question. Um, so from the one I mentioned, the big program, Orplest, um, this is, I believe, um, designed for French local companies um, and perhaps their partners who are involved in collaborative schemes. Um, I don't know if it's open completely to all European countries. Um, I think it's designed mainly for French companies. Um, however, there are other support uh, mechanisms which are mo more open to foreign companies. Um, and one that I can think of um, is, for example, the RPO for packaging in France, CDO. Um, they regularly have uh, a competitive of innovative challenge where they hand out um, bursaries or, or they finance um, a project which they consider to be innovative um, in the circular economy, and particularly the circular plastic sector. So there are opportunities for foreign companies, but let's just say that the big program funded by the state um, is particularly designed for French companies. So then maybe it could be a good idea to collaborate with a French partner and set up a, or set up a subsidiary. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, another question I see in the Q&A box, if you have more questions, don't hesitate to put them in there. What type of biomass um, do you want to convert into plastic and what is the point of doing that? Fernando, I, do you want to reply to this question? Uh, yeah, the in point general, of it, converting biomass, yeah, into plastic. Go ahead, Fernando. No, in general, um, in the Netherlands, there is uh, there is technology available for um, depending on the on the on the value of the biomass, you know, from the really high added value products that can be obtained from the same biomass than low added value products with the residuals of the biomass, and France is really rich in agricultural produce, and that generates tons of biomass in the Netherlands. There is a combination of biomass uh, techno valorization and, and technology that that basically, because in the Netherlands it, it's it's a, such a small country that you need to be really efficient with the biomass available. A lot of biomass comes from from waste, uh, but increasingly uh, in, in the last ten years there, there is really interesting technology uh, valorizing, um, um, which which is used to 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 valorize. Um, for example, uh, I'm not mentioning the name of the of the company, but uh, there is a really unique development in the Netherlands for a circular pet bottle, which is, is coming from biomass. And actually the Netherlands is it's, uh, it's made a partnership with this really large company. And then the technology is, is, is uh, it's, 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 it's really, really state of the art. So having France, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, biomass, I once asked to a, to a R and D manager in the biomass sector, what kind of biomass you need? They say any biomass. You know, a biomass is it's useful, and we will find a use for that. So, mm -hmm. so in general, uh, from my perspective, uh, it's less of a concern what type of biomass, but the quality and the produce that is being is being obtained. So, so it's it's really really interesting sector, um, from 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 that perspective. So we're really thinking of. I once had coffee out of a mug that was lined with. PLA from tomato plants, but I also know cornstarch is often used for plastics. So we're really thinking about a wide range of plants yeah. to plastics. Yeah, I, I, for another example, briefly, you know, uh, in the Outremer uh, territories in France, all the Caribbean territories, there's lots of sugar cane production. There is technology in the Netherlands to all of the 50% of the sugar cane goes to waste. Uh, it's it's wow. currently being burned. And with that material, you can do plasticizers for, for example, carton uh, for packaging. 
and there is so much demand for that right now. And the, the technology, it's, it's available in, 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 in this case in the Netherlands. Perfect. That's really cool. So let's use all that sugar cane and not burn it, but use it for plastic. I have one more question and I see a long question as well in the chat. I first asked the one we already have here. If a company is already active in France, what else can they do to seize these opportunities that have been detailed and are detailed in more detail in the report that you will all receive after the webinar? Morgan. Yeah, um, it's a good question. Um, it's already a really good point if you're obviously already active in the market. Um, I think that collaborative um, networking opportunities, the people who are already in the market who are entering the market remain relevant. Um, so I don't know if you're already aware of clusters, uh, local pool de compétitivité, um, who you could meet. Um, I think that's, that's a good starting point to find out more opportunities and perhaps grow your network. Um, and another recommendation we had in, 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 in our presentation was really to attend these trade fairs uh, regularly um, and if possible, not only sticking to perhaps the biggest ones. Um, there are certain trade fairs that we identified for certain sectors which are related to plastics, uh, which could also be interesting where there's perhaps um, untapped opportunities and, and less competition. So. Um, I think the, the recommendation is always to continue growing your network um, and to also stay aware of opportunities coming from public procurement in particular. Mm, yeah, that's a good, good place to start. And I kind of see that this question also answers a bit the question I see in the chat from Eric about are there any companies in France that have strong solutions that can help so vice versa the transition in the Netherlands? Well, for that, I would really say, keep your eyes on your mailbox today because the report you're gonna receive has uh, specific companies and clusters mentioned. So thank you so much, Morgan and Fernando. We might talk to you a bit at the end if there are more questions, but for now, I would like to give the floor to Corka to present the government support tools to our audience and tell them what they can do to expand their business into France with the help of the Dutch government. So Corka, go ahead. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Leontine. Uh, yes, let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Corka Schieringer. I am a business development coach for RBO, the Netherlands uh, Enterprise. And um, also, first of all, big thanks uh, to Technopolis for this amazing study. Um, I love the presentation. Of course, I've seen the, rep the report, it's very informative. I was very happy um, that we were able to make this study possible as I think this is a very important topic, not just um, the opportunities it has at the moment in the market, but also um, for the future. So I'm, um, I love the, the plans to, or the plastics plans, the, the combination of that. So a uh, quick introduction. So RVO, um, Netherlands Enterprise Agency, how can we help you in doing business in France? Now we work with, uh, sort of say, four pillars. Uh, it's knowledge, information, networking, interest, and financing. Now yours, um, he already gave, gave a great introduction on the economic network. And what he explained very well is how we are so connected. So what is then the difference you might think? Um, RVO, as yours mentioned, we are based in The Hague and we work very closely together with the whole network. So we look for you in the Netherlands and we connect you either with our economic network in France and we work closely together, for example, on uh, providing you information on the market. And that could be through a customized business partner support. And this tool that we use, we look together with you and with our economic network on possible partners or connections that we can uh, enable for you, doors that we can open. We help you search the market maybe a little bit deeper. Now also, uh, we provide a couple of um, financing options, such as vouchers. It's part of our Start as an International Business program. 
This could be either a coaching voucher, which um, you can use to um, and generate, I have a coach to help you set out a strategy for your internationalization plan or a mission voucher if you would like to participate in missions, which was also mentioned earlier on, is very important if you want to enter the market. Um, now, apart from um, just the financing part, I mentioned the information part. Uh, and the information is also the study that we provided right now, the study that we have uh, executed, it's provide you with the information that you need to see what are the opportunities, what is happening in the few years, how can we hop onto this? And then um, the next steps would be seeing, now how can we actually enter this market, which would be the missions we could maybe uh, participate into. And also, uh, which Techn Technopolis also mentioned, clusters are important in France and also in Netherlands, they can have an influence. Now, we also have our um, Partners in International Business um, program in which you can uh, form a cluster with a few companies and we develop with you a strategic plan to um, successfully um, enter the market for the next few years with interesting tools as well. So these are a few of the options. Of course, on their website, there's heaps of more information available, but I also promise to keep it short. Um, also, what else I can say is that sign up for the newsletter, follow us on socials and download the export app because that will give you pop-ups immediately of all uh, information we provide um, of all um, of the upcoming events and you'll just be updated. So if we have a new market study that will be released, you will know there's a mission that you should participate in, you will know. So I think that's a very easy and handy tool to keep yourself updated. Um, this was it for now. If you have any questions though, feel free to contact me uh, afterwards and I'll be happy to help. Perfect, thank you so much, Korka. That is very nice to know some concrete plans of action, what you can do, follow on socials, download the app, contact you, look at the website. So there are some things you can do from the audience directly. Um, I hope you all feel very inspired and informed to start collaborating with the French on the circular plastics now. I want to go back to take a final look at the Q&A box because there are really some interesting questions being asked. So if I can have for the last time Morgan and Fernando back our experts from Technopolis to answer a couple more interesting questions. And then the first one I would like to discuss is the fact that the French government has set the target for 100% plastic recycling by 2025. I already see there's a typed answer, but maybe Morgan, you can just quickly mention what does that mean exactly? Yeah, absolutely. It, it is um, perhaps confusing. You know, there's a distinction to make between the actual recycling abilities of the plastic already in the market, and that needs to be collected, sorted and recycled. That's the objective to be 100% recycled plastic, as opposed to the new plastics, so recycled plastic material or alternatives to plastics coming into the market, We're really referring to the end of life management of the plastic already in the economy that needs to be recycled at the rate of 100%. So as you can see, there's, there's a lot of work to do. Yeah, yeah, we're already in 2021, four more years to go. Yeah, it's, um, it's nice to be ambitious because it means that um, there are real opportunities, as you said, to um, engage in the market right now. Then another question, I see Fernando has been typing, but maybe you can explain it as well. Can you comment on the interest in biomass versus waste as feedstock, and how do you see the need of each of them developing? Um, what we see, I mean, our study, and we really invite you to, to, to request an, a copy of the study. Uh, we, we, we offer some very concrete uh, opportunities in the area of biomass uh, valorization. But what we see in addition to what we, what we established in the report is that there is a clear need 
uh, in, in France and there is, there is a mission to increase the recycling rates in general, but also avoiding and diverting landfill. So this means that on the one hand, uh, cities uh, in general are, are increasingly ambitious in their, in their, in their targets for, for waste collection. And, uh, but there is a challenge in, in France, the, the sorting the different waste streams, you know, once it gets there. So the opportunity is then, in, in, in particular in biomass, to, to, to tap into the increasing uh, uh, attention and interest from private sector operators in France in the agri-food sector uh, to, to make use of the biomass. To, to, there is a clear business case. Uh, currently, they, as I mentioned, not only incineration, but also there is a few biogas installations in wineries and, and, and things like that, but it is really not well known. Uh, but if you present a, if you present a business case uh, to any of these agri-food producers, uh, well, it, in, in some areas, it's, it's really a no-brainer. However, clearly, it has to do also with the targets set by the government. Uh, so if uh, the government is more ambitious, as it is the case with the circular economy law, so this gradual transition from diverting uh, waste that then does not end in landfill because France is below the average uh, compared to not only the Netherlands but but, but many many other countries. Uh, biomass uh, clearly is it's, it's an, biomass valorization is clearly an interesting option, uh, but it's really about tapping in high added value products and 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 clearly I mean the region of Lyon being being interesting uh, uh, what we experience in chemicals they also have their own developments but they, it's behind uh, in general from from what you see in the Netherlands. This is this mm -hmm. is uh, a bit uh, what I can comment to Arnold. Uh, um, uh, and there is another question about, you know, the biomass uh, versus uh, but normal uh, fossil fuel plastic. In our study, we don't, we don't, we don't go into detail in, in, in the difference between the different biomass. But what I can answer right now, obviously, there is also uh, within biomass plastics, it is biodegradable, compostable, and there is non-biodegradable, non-compostable plastic. So, so, so. In France, there is also there is also this distinction that is now being made in the law, favoring the compostable and biodegradable uh, alternatives, and 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 then clearly which which has a, a, a better environmental profile uh, than the non-compostable, non-biodegradable, and 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 that's where obviously it's um, we can guide you to some references if you're interested. But in general, the the uh, the, the, the the distinction can be made uh, between the two. Uh, it, can, it can be. It can be still made from biomass, from plants, from waste, from bio, biomass waste, but it's still being not biodegradable, non-compostable. So, so the, there is uh, obviously the if you are looking at public purchasing and public procurement, obviously they will favor the the, the, the biodegradable option if it's the best uh, fit in terms of performance uh, for the applications they are using, for example. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much, Fernando. That's very interesting. And then. Also, because we've been talking a lot about government targets, is there a specific target on recovering plastics from rivers and oceans? I know, of course, the whole world is concerned with marine plastics. I recently saw the documentary Seaspiracy that was um, eye-opening and heartbreaking at the same time. But maybe, Morgan, you have some information on the targets for recovering plastics from rivers and oceans? Um, so I'm aware that there are objectives from other ministries, the Ministry of Ecology, um, and even regional governments actually have started having zero plastic waste objectives um, in, in their nearby um, rivers or, or seas. Um, within the sector economy law, it's not something that we um, singled out particularly for the report, um, but I can find out and I know that there is a strategy for zero plastic waste that's actually ongoing um, with the objective of zero plastic waste in the ocean by 2025. I just don't know if it's part of the sector economy law. It's probably another strategic um, document which I can also communicate um, at a later stage. Yeah, we can get back to that if, if necessary. Can you just to illustrate because Fernando also mentioned that we are going to 100% recycling, but what is the recycling rate now in France? Yeah, so it's hard to have, so there's so many plastics and it, if you look at certain plastics like PET, the, the recycling rate is a lot higher than the average recycling rate for all plastics. 
Um, but in 2018, there was a kind of European study looking at different recycling rates for plastics across member states. Um, and the average was about 30%. Um, in France, it's slightly under that, under that average. Okay. Under so um, yeah, but I know that um, the, the recycling rate, for example, of PET bottles in France is a lot higher. It's around 60%. Um, so it really depends on the plastic you're looking at. And that's also why there are so many opportunities for chemical recycling. Um, although, of course, the, the research in chemical recycling and its environmental impact is still um, relatively unknown. But there are some plastics which are very hard to recycle. And that's why we're so limited currently in, in, in the rate of recycled plastic. Yeah. That I think kind of wraps up all the questions we had. I have one final question because Morgan Fernando, you wrote this study. What was the most surprising or interesting thing that you learned during the writing of the study? Yeah, it's a nice question. Um, well, I learned a lot really, to be honest. Um, it was super, super interesting to speak to different stakeholders. Um, particularly young companies um, who, who are looking into um, circular plastics. I think what really impressed me was the amount of young companies and startups um, that are working on circular plastics, providing new solutions, um, whether it be, you know, recycled plastic material going into products or alternatives to plastics. So it was really the, the dynamic aspect of the market, particularly for startups and, and young companies. Um, and then um, I, yeah, I just wanted to underline once again that I think France is really trying to do a lot to, to reach its objectives um, in the next decade. And it's, it's a very interesting place to be, I think, for, for the circular plastics economy. Nice. Fernando, do you have also an insight to share what was most interesting or surprising that you found out during the writing of this study? Yeah, um, for me, well, I, I probably for the audience it's interesting to know, I actually lived in the Netherlands for 12 years before moving to Paris. I was uh, my previous employer. I was working for TNO, so I was well more on the technical side of things. And when I came to France uh, and we started the study, I was I was I was happily surprised to see that there is so much uh, so much developments in, in circular economy in general. France is, is really, really a front runner in certain aspects of circular economy. However, for me, it was more of a surprise when, when, whenever I was looking at, at, at the different sections of the study, but also looking at evidence, it's like, well, in the Netherlands, it's been already sorted. Or in the Netherlands, with this other technology, it could be applied. So, so the degree of transferability of solutions, uh, and I was, I was just thinking for myself, you know, I mean, uh, if, if, I, if I were to tell a, a, a company in the Netherlands, next time you get your caravan uh, coming to the south of France on holidays, bring some samples. Because, because you could really, you know, while you're having some wine and then meet some people and then uh, you, there are already some, some really interesting solutions are already there. Um, and funny enough, while doing the study, I went to a big supermar uh, super, uh, you know, retail store here in France, Galerie Lafayette, and they have already circular plastic uh, bottles in, 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 for sale right in front of the, in the main exhibition booth. So, so clearly there is an appreciation for, for, for uh, for uh, Dutch uh, for Dutch products, uh, so that, that was that was just you know this degree of transferability, and then it's it's so obvious sometimes that we just don't look at it. That is really nice to know. Yes, if you go down to France this summer, try to bring some samples and try to meet some people. I think we are all very keen on meeting each other again. Thank you so much, Morgan and Fernando. That is a perfect segue to giving the final word to Joris because we want to meet each other. I already saw in the chat, when is the next time we can meet? He has the final words on that. I just also want to thank you for watching today's webinar and quickly mention that a replay will be available later. Maybe you find that this information would help a colleague or someone else in your network. So don't hesitate to send them the replay of this. So if you want to know what you can do next after this webinar, please listen to what Joris has to say. Joris, thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Leontine. Thank you, uh, Technopolis, uh, Morgana, Fernando, and thank you, Corka. As you see, we are uh, one team and we are really very happy uh, to be here. I see the audience was also interactive. That's why we are here for. Uh, we are based in France or in the Netherlands 
uh, our colleagues working all together, uh, one team to support you to do business in France or to improve your business in France. Because I see in the, the, the people following us today, there are some of them uh, connected uh, since one year with us and following several steps like business partner scans, like uh, SIP vouchers or several products, I would say, or tools we use. And the, the, the one we do today is with a combination because you see that we're uh, speaking about plastics and I learned a lot. I didn't know that there was a link between plastics and biomass. And I see also we have our colleagues in Nantes who did it about biogas and our colleagues at the embassy from Agro uh, department. So you see that all is linked and it's true that uh, circular and being circular today is very important. And now with the actual situation improving, the, 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 the borders are open again. Uh, you can cross Belgium to get into France and to enjoy the summer. And after the summer, we will meet again because we have uh, Polytech. We are working on this since last year because you know that it was 2020. And, uh, but we are lucky that it's 2021 because this year will be the biggest circular trade fair in Europe uh, where we will be, we have an uh, NL uh, lounge with more than 100 square meter, with 12 uh, Dutch companies. With the support of RVO, we can be there massively. And we'll have also several workshops. One of them will be about plastics, to put in front uh, several companies, several Dutch expertise. And what's very important because it's who uh, you ask what about the next steps the next steps now the first one is polytech what we do at polytech is matchmaking networking make you dutch companies uh, meet our network and to uh, create the, that matchmaking and after we will do the planning with uh, leontine corka and astrid and our team to see what are the next steps we will have next steps maybe still this year but for sure in 2022 to federate your uh, several companies to know more about and for the french because i've seen uh, clarice Ganel from cto we will also do matchmaking with french companies do that interaction because we have to we can learn from each other uh, there are innovations in the netherlands there are good uh, solutions in France, and we are there for making the real collaboration between France and the Netherlands, and the Netherlands and France. So thank you all. I see, yeah, we have still five minutes to go, but uh, I know the days are quite full for everybody. Uh, next meeting, hope, will be uh, meeting you. So uh, we will be there at Polytech from the 12th to the 15th in Lyon, city where we are based, Astrid and I, and I want to thank you, especially also this time, Astrid, I didn't till now, but because all the technical solutions or you see, it's uh, she's behind the screen, and hope to meet you very soon uh, and the latest in Polytech, at Polytech, and don't hesitate, we are there to answer all possible questions, so send them to us and we will check and we'll give you the answers. Thank you and see you soon. Goodbye.